In the heart of rural Wiltshire in the summer of 1991, a unique week-long event unfolded in the tiny village of Box. The leisurely pace of English country life and its simple pleasures was shaken gently by unexpected visitors. The well-preserved delights of the village cricket match and the smack of ball on bat were joined by the insistent rhythms of other equally strange traditions. In a converted watermill close to the main line of Isambard Kingdom Brunel's Great Western Railway, the real world studios of rock star Peter Gabriel played host to some 75 musicians and producers from around the globe. The main aim of Real World Recording Week was to record eight albums in seven days, an ambitious project in itself, but also to encourage the musicians from countries as diverse as China, Tanzania, North America, Russia, Colombia and Korea to forge a variety of partnerships. No, the thumb for those two, or for these two, and then this finger falls down there. The idea of these collaborations grew out of the festivals organized by WOMAD. We go to Switzerland tomorrow, yeah. only me and my band. So is this, is today the only day uh, you're here this, this week? Yeah. All oh, right. It's a pity, but it's It is a pity. <laughs> About 1980, I started listening to music from many other countries, and I got to know a group of friends, really, or acquaintances, who were beginning to share some of this enthusiasm. And there was very little available in the shops. It was very hard to hear this music. And we thought it would be great to see if we could create some sort of event where we could bring in a lot of these artists from around the world. And so that was really the conception of Wormad. How many people do we get in here? We can get, um, I think we can get about 600. We're aiming for 400. Every year, all these different musicians come together from many countries and start playing with each other, sort of spontaneously, just around the sites and around the touring buses and so on. And we thought it would be great if this time, instead of just letting that flow into the wind, we should actually grab them all here, record them, and create a lot of situations where people could interact together. Radio 1's Andy Kershaw entertains doubts about the outcome of these cross-cultural experiments. I have to see how these collaboration things work out. You know, I, I'm not entirely easy about the idea of those. You know, I can't really see any reason why there should be any compatibility between a group from Colombia and a, a group from uh, Tanzania or whoever gets together with who. These things sometimes can sound fine on paper, but they can be a frightful mess once they're on the tape. It's too early to know if Kershaw's doubts are justified. For their part, the musicians are keen. Kim Duk Su of the Korean band Samul Nori, for example, is animated by the prospect of this collision of cultures. He believes that um, the basic purpose of the past 35 years of his life has been to affect this meeting between North, or actually between East and West, and therefore being here is a very, very natural extension of his entire lifestyle. What Salmonori has, has done today is, is part of a rather ancient tradition, but uh, something that's still practiced today. It's called um, Chishin Palki, which means treading the earth. And in essence, it's letting the local spirits know that you're here and that um, there are many important events involved in your being here. And he said, for example, um, WOMAD's right in the middle of their festival season. And we're on the first day of our recording for Real World Records. And therefore, we have all these important um, events coming up. And we want everything to turn out well. So you just let whatever spirits are around know that we're here.
There are a variety of working and recording facilities on offer at Real World. Some artists recorded their live performances at the gala concert, which rounded off the week's work. Here, the villagers of Box were treated to an all-star show in a marquee on the studio lawn. One of the artists that chose to record part of his music at the gala was Ayub Ogada. Ayub is a traditional musician from the Luo tribe in Kenya and plays an instrument called the Niatiti. It's a lyre. We carved the bowl out of a fig tree, and then the, the arms are made from eucalyptus. The strings are fishing and the cow skin from the back part of the cow's neck, not a bull. My music is, is based upon traditional stuff, but I write all my own. My experiences are very different. My experience is not 100% traditional. I've got a lot of additions to the culture from the kind of life I've led. Each performance is different, uh, as each day is different. So when I get up there to play, the songs may vary slightly depending on my experience for the day previous to that, uh, that particular performance. The first alliance of the week is between Ayub and the Senegalese drummer Arona who adds his own incisive percussion to Ayub's melodies. He just played some fantastic drums on one of my songs. <laughs> no, me, without even a rehearsal, that's what happened. First take. First take. He didn't really play that much. I really like what I'm hearing. It's great. Great, I'm so, glad. Yeah, so I'm uh, anxious to hear the next track, so. The feel is very, uh, very gentle and very rhythmic. Uh, that's the kind of person I am. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. That's <laughs> the real world studios were built to create what Gabriel calls a marriage of handmade and high tech making sophisticated studio technology available to artists usually unable to gain access to it. During the recording week, the facilities were used by the WOMAD festival artists. The festival thing is now built to where this group of artists travels around together in 14 countries. And uh, so this sense of community builds up on the road with these uh, artists for the first time saying, oh, that melody is just like our old folk song. And, you know, there are all these common elements and uh, to get that sense of improvisation and jamming, which happens on all of those festival tours and into the studio. This is the first time we've tried to do that. Now, there's some chords you had on here, right? Yeah, I just, I, I just had this little thing. 
was another secret. To cope with so many diverse musicians, Gabriel enlists several producers to help supervise the recordings. Carl Wallinger of World Party is to work alongside Gabriel in his personal studio. He's helping give form to the cross-pollination of ideas. You know, I've sort of been joint chairs of this room up here, and uh, it's wonderful for me to have someone else taking some responsibility there. I get the feeling that he really wants a, a song to come out of this, something that, that works in its own right in the same way that, you know, like a number, you know? A number you can, like, lean on the lamppost at the corner of the street listening to wafting out of a cafe and, like, stand there chewing gum to and think, you know, yeah, that's OK, you know? Rather than it being... I mean, we want a song, you know? I think he very much wants a, to try and find a song, you know, out of all this thing, rather than just having the groove. It's easy, in a way, to, to lay down tracks with everybody on them, but to make something that makes sense... Like I said, it'd be nice if it came out of Radio 1 and sort of made sense to a lot of people, you know? Wallinger and Gabriel were assisted by sound engineer Dave Bottrell. You hear something like this, which is a certain groove, and then you hear it a certain way, and you will interpret it and play, and but the, the whole soup of that will become like a, like a skew, and it, yes. like an ethnic skew. Yes. It's, it's too yeah. 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 And hopefully, when these other rhythms are done, you can start some rhythms for other people to build on top yes, of right. as well. They begin with a rhythm track created by the percussion of Senegal's Arona and a melodic riff from Madagascar's Ross. Well, Sharona was just, yeah, suggesting also to try a, like a slower thing. Ross I knew nothing about until about three months ago, and then there's this uh, uh, TV program on Madagascar that was sort of the introduction to me of, of him and his music. Um, but I love what he does. I think he's, he's a great writer too. Uh, and some of the instruments, you know, like this, this bamboo harp that he made himself. A beautiful sounding thing, you know, exquisite. And uh, I mean, it gives us a sense of privilege, you know, we have the earning capacity just to go out and buy the instruments that we want. And um, there they are making the instruments out of bamboo and getting sounds every bit as beautiful as uh, that which we get. Um, and I think, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely going to be someone to watch, I think. I play the Valia and the Kabosi. Uh, Valia is a bamboo harp from Madagascar made with uh, bamboo, and uh, the strings are basically break cable. Jar Wobble was once a punk star with Public Image Limited. These days, he has his own group, Invaders of the Heart. He provides a typically pulsating bass line with a strong reggae influence. For me, music kind of makes itself. It's different for other players. But for me, if I, um, I'm a very anxious sort of a person, generally. Very uptight sort of a person. Music's the one thing. When I play music or when I think about music, um, I lose myself. and. Um, things seem to work from the unconscious. So you open up and you simply, it's as if the music exists somewhere else and you become merely a channel rather than the actual creator as such. And it's the, it's the thing that still surprises me and it's the most exciting thing in my life. Um, as suddenly it's, it, you, you're playing and it's later you think, where the hell did that come from? Where the hell did that come together? Time has come and I won't leave you anymore, not anymore. Returning from the spirit of his womb, of his womb. I used to think you not came when you said you said I won't go far.
with vocals from Gabriel and others, the resulting composition is titled Taste of Lime. Oh, you can have a sweet unless you know the taste of lime. When you find a beat, love will never be a crime. In writing rooms, work rooms, and ad hoc studios around the real world site, similar co productions are underway. When you find a beat, love will never be a crime. A crime. Seven calling, seven calling, seven calling in the dream. Seven calling, seven calling, seven calling. The haunting music of singer Mary Buan is rooted in her native Sami land, or Lapland, and in the struggles of the nomadic Sami people to retain their lifestyle and culture. For a long time, our, our culture and also the music has been very oppressed. The Scandinavians tried to make it disappear, <laughs> but they didn't manage. It's still alive, it's still there, and me and my musicians, we are taking it, letting it flow again. Mari's no musical purist. The flute player's from Peru, and her band embraces rock elements in its adaptation of folk sounds. Korean quartet combined traditional and modern percussion. Following their success back home, the group's name Samul Nori has become generic for this style of music. A Korean drum troupe might seem an odd choice to work with a lap folk singer. It turns out that their music has more in common than they expect. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very popular folk song in Korea. Mari's from the very <laughs> northern part of Norway, as he understands it, and um, she sang folk song from that area, and by some remarkable coincidence, it was very, very similar to a folk song from the region known as Gyeonggi province, which is in central Korea, and surrounds the city of Seoul. So it was very natural for him to pick up the tone of her song and accompany her singing.
This collusion of talents is produced by Paul Brennan, an ex-member of the Irish folk band Clannard. Pro professional 음악인이었고 yeah. 어머님 아버님이 그 영향으로 어렸을 때부터 해왔고 그래서 저는 굉장히 하느님께 감사해요. Yeah. 많은 사람 중에서 폴 같은 친구를 만나게 해줘서. To begin with, he feels very, very fortunate that among all the producers in the world and all the people that we could have ended up working with, that um, we got someone like Paul. Because he says between Paul and himself, there are many points of similarity. For example, Paul's parents were musicians, and Paul is carrying on in that family tradition. And uh, Mr. Kim comes from the same thing. His parents were musicians, and he's carrying on a family tradition. Apart from working with Mari, Samuel Nori were asked by Brennan to provide percussion tracks for other artists. This means the Korean drummers breaking from their usual playing patterns to give Brennan what he wants. What I'm trying to do is set up sort of grooves and, and, feet, and moods for people to, to react and play to. Um, the idea of collaboration is that people and musicians will play together. A lot of that time that I've heard people playing together in Ireland or in anywhere is after they've had about 14 pints to drink. And anyone, you know, they'll play, they'll play with anyone. Long after the Koreans who created the underlying rhythms have departed, Brennan is still adding overdubs from Maribuan's group. Nice. Lovely touches. Lovely flute playing. So it's just the same again. And in the beginning, maybe just a bit more space when we play. Give it a little bit of room, and then. Other than that, it's perfect. We already did some um, percussive things to Samuel Nori, who are gone today. So we just worked from that end, and now we're adding some more colours. So we're not sure what we're doing, but we like it. <laughs> Only banana. Yeah. <laughs> the classically trained Terem Quartet were visiting Britain for the first time. We must, uh, we must have a connection. We must connect uh, by music, mm -hmm. not separate. We must have different money, no music, but music. One everywhere. <laughs> Having originally met at the St. Petersburg Conservatory, the Terams perform their own versions of traditional music using the mighty bass balalaika, two domras, and the more familiar accordion. The task of recording them is put in the hands of pop producer Tony Berg. Russian artists have almost a more foreign quality to them. To, to my ear, to 
I think, in American or English here than the Africans or the, uh, the Asian artists who are here. Somehow, this is such a disciplined form for them, and they have spent so long refining it that the task here isn't to alter it. It's to represent it well so that I can learn by it, so that we can learn by it, and then subtly try and uh, initiate them into the Western recording process. Fastidious about their own work, the Tarim Quartet were also asked by Gabriel and Wallinger to launch themselves into new territory, working alongside others to build up an ensemble number. First comes the rhythm track from the ubiquitous Arona. The bass line is added by Wallinger. And there's a flute melody from Guo Yue, a Chinese musician who began his career with the band of the Red Army. Musically, I think there's a lot of link because musically, all music always to do with notes and notation and scale. Mm -hmm. So a lot of country scale, I think, is very uh, similar. It's like it's almost the, you could just play That's along it. and just be yeah. going pa -pa 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 yeah. and, and they okay. could just go in and out at, at the point that I he knows. I can play. I can play. That four bars is not for not for beat. Four bars. <laughs> There's also room for some dramatic overlays from Spain's virtuoso flamenco guitarist, Juan Canizares. That's the, that's the bass keyboard, the, the foundation keyboard. Yeah, cut that at the beginning. Just for one bar. Right. Just for this. Just dead interesting combinations, you know. Like one, the, the flamenco player explaining a song via an interpreter to Arona from Senegal, you know. It's, it's a, 
that the, the process of them explaining it to each other, let alone the music, is interesting. You know? it's, it's fascinating. trying to loosen up the Russians too, that was fun. Because, you know, I think everyone has their own different background and uh, way of working. And I think for one, the, the flamenco player and uh, the term quartet, they both come from more sort of structured, disciplined and, uh, you know, virtuoso playing. So to have them loosening up and not worrying too much about the mistakes has been um, an interesting uh, piece of negotiation. I think one of the interesting things for all of us who saw the term quartet is the way they approach their music. For a start, we had no idea if they're just taking a piss all the time or not. But the secondly, just the, the, the styles are very different. They have these big sort of surges of sound and then retreat like waves. And they are so meticulous and accurate in, in what they do. It's like watching this sort of finely tuned machine at work, but it's, it's a very much a sort of organic, breathing animal. If you play it the first time, right? And and then you reiterate the melody on the octave. If you take the melody the second time. Many of the African artists who are here have more experience cross-pollinating with Western music than the Tarim Quartet does. They have performed almost exclusively in Russia, some trips to Finland and now recently Western Europe, but they've never been to the States. And uh, this, I would say this to them is their uh, most profound experience with Western musicians and Western culture. So there's got to be a good deal of culture shock going on for them, as there is for me. A different and more intimate piece of teamwork involves Chinese singer Liu Sola and the Japanese percussionist Joji Hirota, whose regular job is musical director of the Lindsay Kemp Dance Company. The same as Chinese music. You know, it's like a beginning. Uh, the, the people all sing the same music, then they, they, they change. And now I'd like to, you know, if we can bring this together again. Because people have the, the same feeling with music, the whole world. Yeah. But now Oriental music is very soft, and the European music, quite, and the African music is stronger than Oriental music. If those two different music together, it's like a, you know, different races, different, it mix up, it's, I just, I just feel wonderful. And like 3,000 years ago, we played the same instrument. I'm sure, you know, I found in Japan like a six ocarina, ocarina, the clay, um, South American fruit. There in Japan 3,000 years ago, exactly the same. 
And also the China, the China have big, big influence to Japan, they've got five centuries. All Chinese culture, music, and, and writing, everything came in about the five century, four, five century. Then we have very, very beautiful original people, more than, more than they have. <laughs> Joji's introduced a rhythm track as the first step in another experiment, which also involves the Chinese flautist Guo Yue. It was about spending our time up there looking for an idea, you know, it was a bit like we're, we're homing in on, on a kind of what Van Morrison calls the Zen moment, you know, or trying to find just a bit of music that makes sense or that feels good, you know. And so we're we're like a bit like a missile that's guided towards, you know, the target, you know, which is the, the Zen moment, the good bit of music. And uh, you think you see it coming up, but it turns out in the end to be a sort of grey cloud that looks solid on the radar, and you just go straight through it to the next thing. So, and you just sort of keep going really until you find that thing. And I was saying that. I hope to sort of explode on impact just once when I'm down here this week would be nice. You know? Ireland's Sinead O'Connor adds her distinctive tones. I suppose people just connect to music and I don't really understand the, I think that to, to discuss it and to analyse it and to um, go into it in great detail uh, is a mistake because if we were the kind of people that communicated through words we wouldn't be musicians in the first place. The drummers and percussionists find it easiest to team up with others. Joji's contributions stretch from musical impressionism to the calibrated electro approach of the grid. My name's Rich, Richard Norris, and uh, I'm from a band called The Grid, and we're doing uh, kind of lots of collaborations. Basically, very, we play kind of very sort of modern. Uh, dance music and uh, using a lot of electronic keyboard samplers and effects basically so uh, we just can't try and marry that with uh, whoever's around really be it um, flamenco guitarists or um, you know drummers or um, singers from Lapland or whoever so it's um, as is a kind of main sort of uh, slightly more Western approach to, to world music than the rest of them I think but uh, that's what we're up to. Joji, I didn't really know anything about until this session, and uh, it's very curious because each culture places the beat, you know, the way the one goes or the back beat or whatever, in a different place. And he's sort of on top, and it's very sort of fast, but it's it's a very sort of atmospheric and filmic approach to drums, and uh, it feels very different to the way, you know, say a, a like a Holmes Brothers or I mean like a black soul drummer with some of sort of laid back and hit the snare way back. The laid back beat of the Holmes Brothers comes from Fairfax, Virginia and underpins their gritty blend of barroom rhythm and blues and down-home gospel.
throughout the week, the Holmes brothers pop up on all manner of projects and still find time to record their own album of gospel standards with producer Andy Breslau. The Holmeses have been uh, laying tracks with all different kinds of people. Um, Sherman laid down some bass tracks with Paul Brennan. Popsy was doing some drum things from uh, a Japanese drummer, a Tanzanian drummer, a Colombian drummer. opportunities for kind of uh, creative hybrids are endless here. When it's working, you want everyone to hear it, and uh, when it isn't working and you're just feeling it out, it's a delicate process, so uh, we have to feel, uh, feel each other out. The result of the Holmes brothers teaming up with Gabriel is the fiery burn you up, burn you down. Remy Ongala is a huge star in Tanzania. He and his orchestra super Matamila decide to record their album live in the studio with an invited audience. Yeah, we say in music, if you want music in the world, music have got one language. It is, it is the same. If you go to Africa, you go to Africa. If Africa plays the music, you come, you, you, you come try to they sing it, it's the same. <laughs> if we arrive here, we sing with the European men. It's good too. Can anybody speak French? Ongala's supercharged Sukus guitars also prove highly compatible with gospel, according to the Holmes brothers. <laughs> the opportunity to, to brainstorm creatively and have access to some of the world's greatest musicians and all kinds of different idioms. It's incredible. And the other night we did a live, we did a version of Will the Circle Be Unbroken with uh, three guitar players from Remy Angala Band from uh, Tanzania.
shouldn't just be a whole mesh of loose jamming, but we should actually focus in and try and get some song-like things out of this week. Um, so that's why we have a sort of a poet's corner and the instant lyrics department, uh, so that it isn't just a sort of instrumentalist player's paradise, but a writer's environment as well. The jumble of rhythms, languages and voices produced a huge assortment of lyrics. One offbeat result of Writer's Corner, delivered on impulse by Ross, was a slice of Malagasy rap. We have um, this kind of rap in Madagascar, but we call it Zizi in another rhythm. But when I hear the, the African beat on uh, Peter Gabriel's uh, keyboard, I directly think to this form of rap in Madagascar and to make the connection from here, the rap, modern music, rap and everything. Not really a real rap from here and not also a real rap from Madagascar, it's between. <laughs> A fusion of three diverse backgrounds from China, Japan and Ireland is one creative collaboration that's grown out of the WOMAD tours. Guo Yue, Joji and Brennan perform here at the week's closing gala concert.
for me, this is a dream come true this, this week. I mean, to get a, in a place full of people from many different cultures and countries, uh, finding ways, uh, enjoyable ways to sort of spend time together, work together, and make music together. That's it's a very powerful uh, thing for me. World's Recording Week notched up all of its eight target albums, some of which bear the fruits of the adventurous permutations of music and people that the week encouraged. Not all of the collaborations were successful. Some ended up as hopeful oddities, others as work in progress. But for a week at least, the spirit of artistic adventure they represent made a corner of Wiltshire into an epicenter of the globe's music. Music